We have a young brother that gave his account of his 11 year career in the United States Air Force. Now, you know, black people have been in the military, you know, for a long time. We have been in every conflict and every war and they still treat us uh, less than in the military. You know, I have just a different opinion about the military. I, I respect brothers and sisters that do that and I appreciate them. But at the end of the day, I just have a thing that, you know, if, if I still live in a country where they calling me the N word and this country, you know, doesn't treat my people as human beings completely. And it's one set of rules for them and one set of rules for me then, you know, why should I be getting involved with any of that? I can fight, you know, in my own community. I fight my own battles there. That's how I look at that. So they said this, you know, one brother, um, his name is Major Daniel Walker. Um, he said that he had to moderate his behavior as a black man in the military and didn't lose sight of the mindset that his actions would be scrutinized early on when he first started. So he said that the way you stand, he said the way you walk, the way you sit, the way you talk, he said it's what is supposed to be in an objective field. He said they are subjectively rating you, he said to others in sort of an unofficial grapevine of evaluation. Now he said he definitely know that he's been treated differently than white pilots. <laughs> yeah. Now the brother, you know, he's originally from Dallas and he said he come from a legacy of stealth fighter pilots. He grew up hearing stories of his great uncle Norman Scales, is a Tuskegee Airman, he said, who earned his distinguished flying cross to his service during the World War II. Now he said six years old, he said to have your dad's uncle be a Tuskegee Airman. He said see the movie. He said hear about Uncle Scales. He said your family couldn't help but talk about him. He said he felt at an early age those hopes would be transferred to his shoulders. Now he said he wanted to, you know, attend the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado before continuing pilot training. He said, but once in the ranks, the brother said that he quickly realized you know, that, you know, he was perceived differently by his white counterparts. He said this, he said, you're big, you're black with a deep voice. You're intimidating. Now let, let's, you know how weak you gotta be to be afraid of another man. You say this, you scared of this man's color. You scared of this man's size. You scared of this man's voice. Oh my God. He's so intimidating. This is why they hope this is why they want them guns so much. Cause they're scared of their own shadow. A brother ain't even thinking about them. He just being him and you're afraid of him. Why are you so afraid of black people for, you know, like saying somebody that's that afraid of you, well, so it's something they're projecting about themselves, right? So he said that that story is not uncommon. He said, I could easily say attribute this interaction to, you know, not any action on my part. He said, but when you compare stories to people say you never met, he said, they're almost identical down to the individual, down to the comment. You realize these are not singular events in a person's life. Yeah. The military is full of white supremacy. I mean, come on. I mean, the military is a wing of white supremacy. That is the, uh, you know, military side of it. Right now. He said that he was warned by black veterans before entering flight school that the color of his skin would impact the way he was treated, not his abilities, the color of your skin. As I tell black people, we live in a de facto apartheid system. We do. Why is it that his skin color matters? because you have a, a entity that's controlled by white supremacists. That's why it matters. And I said, they're going, he said, they told him that you're going to treat you fairly, unfairly. They said, when, when you wash out, they're probably going to, uh, not going to keep you in the air force. They told him, he said, but he said he wanted to prove that it could be done. Okay. So he said, but not, he said, not long after joining the F 22 squadron in Langley, Virginia, he said, he said he was told that, he was too quiet. They say when he led his associates to believe that he was too good. So a brother being quiet around you, now these folks saying, oh, he think he better than us. Okay. So he said that back in flight schools, that Walker had been told he was too loud. So if you're too loud, you're too quiet, it's a problem either way. Understand, so let me tell y'all something. When someone hates you, you can be loud, you can be quiet, you could be anything they want you to be. They still going to find fault in you because they hate you. 
This is why I've, I've been a firm believer of F them. I'm going to be who I am. And if they don't like me, get the hell away from me. That's how I feel about that. I'm not changing who I am to be around them. You shouldn't change yourself to be around them either. Matter of fact, nobody should change yourself to be around anybody. Be whoever you're going to be. If they don't like it, they can kick rocks. Now the brother say after 11 years, he said, describe him, he said, uphill battle, oh, I know it was. He say with racism in the ranks, he said he departed leaving the Air Force with less than 50 fighter pilots at the time. Look, the whole Air Force only have 50 black pilots. Are you freaking serious? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I, I would hope that he sent a letter um, or email uh, to the current you know, guy that's running it now, you know, the, the, the brother, I would hope you send an email about that. Now the brother came in and say he wants to get rid of, you know, extremism in the military, but it was built on extremism. Now this brother said that he has been accepted to Harvard law school and he plans to serve his country in a different plane. But I would say, tell that brother, you know, you got too much experience with those airplanes, brother, you know, you, you need to give it some, some brothers and sisters on the continent, you know, how at Ethiopian airlines, um, you know, they probably definitely could use your expertise over there. Um, I, I just wouldn't, like I said, all that racism, I, I just can't, I can't endure it. Not like that. That that's why I just learned a long time ago. I got to build something for myself. I refuse to be putting up with their faces. I refuse to be putting up with their attitudes. I refuse to be dealing with that. I, I'm sorry, I just can't deal with that. No, 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 no. We all men and all that, and women and anything else, you're not gonna treat me any, any different. And this is why I tell uh, us, the, the, the best way that we can limit some of that interaction is doing for self. Because that's wrong, that young brother just wanna continue the legacy of his family. He had, what, 11 years in, he'd done a few more years, he could have got his, uh, his retirement. He had to leave before his retirement because the racism was too much. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that, you know, some people say, oh, he should have just fought. Man, that stuff wear down on your soul. It wear down on your spirit every day, this evil surrounding you, this evil attacking you day in, day out, day in and day out. It gets old. It gets real old and people get tired of it. They really do, okay? So I don't fault the brother for, for leaving. I really don't, because you can only take so much. Your sanity is worth more at the end of the day. And some people may say, well, he let, you let people win when they do that. No, listen, I don't wanna be uh, in no entities, you know, trying to defend Babylon anyway. Why don't you defend your own self? We, we need people to defend us, because we sure ain't got no protection in this, in this system, right? But um, shout out to the brother, man. I, you know, like I said, brother, you know, you endured a lot because of course they don't want you flying the fighter jets. Oh no, 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 no. They feel that only they supposed to be flying that. But leave me a comment then or think about the situation with our brother, you know, just going through, you know, just white supremacy in the Air Force. Um, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's sad. And I hate to hear that. And I know more brothers and sisters in the military, you know, probably enduring that right now. And, and maybe former veterans probably got all kind of, stories. I've heard them from many black veterans. Um, but like I said, we got to do something different. And my thing is, you know, I, I just don't like I say for the life of me, I don't understand how you function with hate all the time. I, I just, I can't even stay mad. Not even, you know, a, a day because that, that just get on my nerves just being mad about something. Or, and I don't even know how it feels to be hating somebody constantly. Like I said, I guess, you know, when, when you, when you taught that, you know, from an early age and, you know, it's in your lineage to be a devil, I guess.